This started some 70 years ago when Santa brought me a projector. Money was very tight, but my parents still found some to give us three children a decent Christmas, I got this rather simplistic, but beautiful, mini cine. I played the films time after time, it fascinated me. Eventually, I progressed to film shows in my friend's darkened garage, with me turning the handle and reading the script my sister with an upturned bicycle turning the wheel with the dynamo on producing the six volts needed for the bulb. It was great fun. As time moved on and I was involved in other ventures, the projector lay in its box until recently, when I had the urge to transfer the films to a modern medium MP4. I could no longer turn the handle at a constant speed, so I made a connection, and with a drill clamped in a vice. Turned out it was far too fast, but then I thought of an electric screwdriver it was perfect. Then came the long process of projecting and copying the film. The images had to be sharpened and cropped, and the text spoken by an electronic voice, then into an audio program, to be clipped and modified and then placed in the appropriate position within the film the one I chose to represent my collection was Mickey in Africa. Some of the words on the script which I copied faithfully are deemed racist currently. They are not mine. Sit back and see just how I managed this long and somewhat complicated process I gave it much thought at every juncture. I like to think this is an ingenious project, the results are great.
It was a wonderful moment when Mickey and Minnie and Goofy reached Africa and were received with great politeness by the governor for they had come in search of some treasure which according to a map which Mickey had discovered had been hidden way out in the desert many years ago by an explorer. It was a wonderful moment when Mickey and Minnie and Goofy
The governor lent them his servant Sambo to help them on their journey and also introduced them to Bessie his pet chimpanzee Bessie took an enormous fancy to Mickey and cuddled and hugged him so much that Minnie took a poor view of this till Mickey said of course that he liked her best. The governor lent them his servant Sambo to help them on their journey and also introduced them to Bessie his pet chimpanzee Bessie took an enormous fancy to Mickey and cuddled and hugged him so much that Minnie took a poor view of this till Mickey said of course that he liked her best. It was a wonderful moment when Mickey and Minnie and Goofy reached Africa and were received with great politeness by the governor for they had come in search of some treasure which according to a map which Mickey had discovered had been hidden way out in the desert many years ago by an explorer. The governor lent them his servant Sambo to help them on their journey and also introduced them to Bessie his pet chimpanzee Bessie took an enormous fancy to Mickey and cuddled a D Bessie took an enormous D Bessie took an enormous fancy to Mickey and cuddled and hugged him so much that Bessie took an enormous fancy to Mickey and cuddled and hugged him so much that Minnie took a poor view of this till Mickey said of course that he liked her best. Pet chimpanzee Bessie took an enormous fancy to Mickey many years ago by an explorer. The governor lent them his servant Sambo to help them on their journey and also introduced them to Bessie his pet chimpanzee. Bessie took an enormous fancy to Mickey and cuddled and hugged him so much that Minnie took a poor view of this till Mickey said of course that he liked her best.
It was a wonderful moment when Mickey and Minnie and Goofy reached Africa and were received with great politeness by the governor for they had come in search of some treasure which according to a map which Mickey had discovered had been hidden way out in the desert many years ago by an explorer. The governor lent them his servant Sambo to help them on their journey and also introduced them to Bessie his pet chimpanzee. Bessie took an enormous fancy to Mickey and cuddled and hugged him so much that Minnie took a poor view of this till Mickey said of course that he liked her best. This time, he was quite right and back across the desert they trekked in style with Mickey and Minnie on one elephant and Goofy with all the treasure on the other it was a very happy trio who left in the train for the coast where a ship was waiting to take them home.
This time, he was quite right and back across the desert they trekked in style with Mickey and Minnie on one elephant and Goofy with all the treasure on the other it was a very happy trio who left in the train for the coast where a ship was waiting to take them home. It was a wonderful moment when Mickey and Minnie and Goofy reached Africa and were received with great politeness by the governor for they had come in search of some treasure which according to a map which Mickey had discovered had been hidden way out in the desert many years ago by an explorer. The governor lent them his servant Sambo to help them on their journey and also introduced them to Bessie his pet chimpanzee Bessie took an enormous fancy to Mickey and cuddled and hugged him so much that Minnie took a poor view of this till Mickey said of course that he liked her best. motor car lent by the governor they drove off into the desert and when they reached a village of friendly natives they were given a great welcome
he liked her best. Soon in a motor car lent by the governor they drove off into the desert, and when they reached a village of friendly natives, they were given a great welcome, but back at government house Bessie was shaking the bars of her cage and dancing with rage for she wanted to be with Mickey. dancing with rage for she wanted to be with Mickey. At last she escaped and managed to track them down, but Mickey wasn't having any fixing a collar and reins on her he and Minnie led her back home, and then off they set once more till by nightfall they reached the oasis marked on Mickey's map. more till by nightfall they reached the oasis marked on Mickey's map. There they camped getting Sambo to light a fire to keep off prowling animals. Suddenly Sambo cried Mr. Massadares, someone prowling around this camp, so snatching his gun Mickey made a round of the encampment, he could find nothing yet he too felt there was someone snooping around.
was a wonderful moment when Mickey and Minnie and Goofy reached Africa and were received with great politeness by the governor for they had come in search of some treasure which according to a map which Mickey had discovered had been hidden. Licking his lips the fat king waddled up to the three mini clung to Mickey as he looked them hungrily over. It was a wonderful moment when Mickey and Minnie and Goofy reached out.
It was a wonderful moment when Mickey and Minnie and Goofy reached Africa and were received with great politeness by the governor for they had come in search of some treasure which according to a map which Mickey had discovered had been hidden way out in the desert many years ago by an explorer. The governor lent them his servant Sambo to help them on their journey and also introduced them to Bessie his pet chimpanzee. Bessie took an enormous fancy to Mickey and cuddled and hugged him so much that Minnie took a poor view of this till Mickey said of course that he liked her best. Soon in a motor car lent by the governor they drove off into the desert, and when they reached a village of friendly natives, they were given a great welcome, but back at government house Bessie was shaking the bars of her cage and dancing with rage for she wanted to be with Mickey. At last she escaped and managed to track them down, but Mickey wasn't having any fixing a collar and reins on her he and Minnie led her back home and then off they set once more till by nightfall they reached the oasis marked on Mickey's map. There they camped getting Sambo to light a fire to keep off prowling animals. Suddenly Sambo cried Mr. Massadares, someone prowling around this camp, so snatching his gun Mickey made a round of the encampment, he could find nothing yet he too felt there was someone snooping around. Next morning Mickey began to dig presently he came upon an iron chest we've done it cried Goofy as he helped me he haul it. Next morning Mickey began to dig presently he came upon it was a wonderful moment. Next morning Mickey began to dig presently. He came presently he came upon an iron chest we've done it cried goof. Morning Mickey began to dig presently he came up Morning Mickey began to dig presently he came upon an iron chest we've done it cried Goofy as he helped Mickey haul it to the surface but he spoke too soon for with fierce yells a band of cannibals who had indeed been hiding around last night swooped upon them. Licking his lips the fat king waddled up to the three mini clung to Mickey as he looked them hungrily over and then seeing that Goofy was the biggest the king seized him and began feeling his arm to see how plump he was yum yum he cried I'll eat you first. So according to his order the cannibal cook and in spite of his struggles peppered and salted him, and trussed him ready, for hanging he served Minnie, the same hanging had beside a ready trussed bird in the larder help help cried Minnie then, and tried hard to wriggle free. And help was indeed at hand Bessie had escaped once more, and tracked them down now, with a yell she pounced on the king, and beat him up then from the tree, where he was hanging Mickey watched Bessie attacking the rest of the cannibals despite their spears. When that job was done Bessie unhooked Mickey and freed his hands immediately Mickey dashed to the cookhouse and leapt upon the cannibal in charge with a biff and a bang he laid him out too then seizing a spear he slashed through the rope binding poor Goofy in the pot already bubbling over the fire. I'll fetch the baggage elephants along now cried Bessie you'll certainly need them when I've opened that treasure chest for you. With her strong claws she at last managed to tear it open gosh cried Goofy decking himself with rings and bracelets and necklaces we've done it at last. This time he was quite right and back across the desert they trekked in style with Mickey and Minnie on one elephant and Goofy with all the treasure on the other it was a very happy trio who left in the train for the coast where a ship was waiting to take them home.
It was a wonderful moment when Mickey and Minnie and Goofy reached Africa and were received with great politeness by the governor for they had come in search of some treasure which according to a map which Mickey had discovered had been hidden way out in the desert many years ago by an explorer. The governor lent them his servant Sambo to help them on their journey and also introduced them to Bessie his pet chimpanzee. Bessie took an enormous fancy to Mickey and cuddled and hugged him so much that Minnie took a poor view of this till Mickey said of course that he liked her best. Soon in a motor car lent by the governor they drove off into the desert and when they reached a village of friendly natives It was a wonderful moment when Mickey and Minnie and Goofy reached Africa and were received with great politeness by the governor for they had come in search of some treasure which according to a map which Mickey had discovered had been hidden way out in the desert many years ago by an explorer. The governor lent them his servant Sambo to help them on their journey and also introduced them to Bessie his pet chimpanzee. Bessie took an enormous fancy to Mickey and cuddled and hugged him so much that Minnie took a poor view of this till Mickey said of course that he liked her best. Soon in a motor car lent by the governor they drove off into the desert and when they reached a village of friendly natives they were given a great welcome but back at government house Bessie was shaking the bars of her cage and dancing with rage for she wanted to be with Mickey. At last she escaped and managed to track them down, but Mickey wasn't having any fixing a collar and reins on her he and Minnie led her back home, and then off they set once more till by nightfall they reached the oasis marked on Mickey's map. There they camped getting Sambo to light a fire to keep off prowling animals. Suddenly Sambo cried Mr. Macedares, someone prowling around this camp. So snatching his gun Mickey made a round of the encampment, he could find nothing yet he too felt there was someone snooping around. Next morning Mickey began to dig. Presently he came upon an iron chest we've dug. Natives, they were given a great welcome. But back at Government House Bessie was shaking. Mickey said of course that he liked her best. Soon in a motor car lent by the Governor they drove off into the desert. It was a wonderful moment when Mickey and Minnie and Goofy reached Africa and were received with great politeness by the governor for they had come in search of some treasure which according to a map which Mickey had discovered had been hidden way out in the desert many years ago by an explorer. The governor lent them his servant Sambo to help them on their journey and also introduced them to Bessie his pet chimpanzee. Bessie took an enormous fancy to Mickey and cuddled and hugged him so much that Minnie took a poor view of this till Mickey said of course that he liked her best. Soon in a motor car lent by the governor they drove off into the desert and when they reached a village of friendly natives, they were given a great welcome, but back at Government House Bessie was shaking the bars of her cage and dancing with rage for she wanted to be with Mickey.
At last she escaped and managed to track them down. But Mickey wasn't having any fixing a collar, and reins on her he and Minnie led her back home. And then off they set once more till by nightfall they reached the oasis marked on Mickey's map. There they camped getting Sambo to light a fire to keep off prowling animals. Suddenly Sambo cried Mr. Massadares, someone prowling around this camp, so snatching his gun Mickey made a round of the encampment, he could find nothing yet he too felt there was someone snooping around. Next morning Mickey began to dig presently he came upon an iron chest we've done it cried Goofy, as he helped Mickey haul it to the surface. But he spoke too soon for with fierce yells a band of cannibals, who had indeed been hiding around last night swooped upon them. Licking his lips the fat king waddled up to the three mini clung to Mickey, as he looked them hungrily over, and then seeing that Goofy was the biggest the king seized him, and began feeling his arm, to see how plump he was yum yum he cried I'll eat you first. So according to his order the cannibal cook, and in spite of his struggles peppered, and salted him, and trussed him ready, for hanging he served Minnie the same hanging her beside a ready trussed bird in the larder help help cried Minnie then, and tried hard to wriggle free. And help was indeed at hand Bessie had escaped once more and tracked them down now with a yell she pounced on the king, and beat him up then from the tree, where he was hanging Mickey watched Bessie attacking the rest of the cannibals despite their spears. When that job was done Bessie unhooked Mickey, and freed his hands immediately Mickey dashed to the cookhouse, and leapt upon the cannibal in charge, with a biff and a bang he laid him out too then seizing a spear he slashed through the rope binding poor Goofy, in the pot already bubbling over the fire. I'll fetch the baggage elephants along now cried Bessie you'll certainly need them when I've opened that treasure chest for you. With her strong claws, she at last managed to tear it open gosh cried Goofy decking himself with rings and bracelets and necklaces, we've done it at last. This time, he was quite right and back across the desert they trekked in style with Mickey and Minnie on one elephant and Goofy with all the treasure on the other it was a very happy trio who left in the train for the coast where a ship was waiting to take them home. <laughs>